Okay, Telecom T1 picked up a few more wins, including one over China's IMA to claim uh, the first place in the group. Very important match was that for that. And as you said, interesting compositions, of course, trying a couple of new different things, even when they still had to secure first. This game was hilarious for IMA with the Kha'Zix and Nautilus. <laughs> it was just really, it was fun. You, you kind of know what's happening in the end for SKT being able to win. And here's going to be a, a nice little Baron seal, which is the only thing we could Got credit it. a void list to this entire game. <laughs> it was pretty awesome seal, you know, going invisible there and getting it right before before he dies, but uh, as fun as it was to watch, SKT still dominating performance there. Yeah, definitely uh, very good for them. And then in the second, or in the fight for second, rather, Cloud9, they showed up when it counted, picking up a win against Aimee to keep their tournament hopes alive. They didn't have faith in their own hands, but they had to win. But man, was it hard. Yeah, you gotta start sweating for this one. This one was Cloud9 being able to take the advantage and not being able to break through that late game team composition, as you see here, that 42 minute in. I made defense with Meteos just walking into the mid lane for some reason and getting caught. I made doing well. Yeah, uh, Cloud9 said it themselves. They've got a lot of stuff to clean up. Uh, they are going to move forward, but uh, it is going to take some work. Yeah, they had a couple of these games where it actually went really long. Of course, that Flash Wolves won last week famously as well. And of course, the nerves had to be getting to them. But C9's fate was then in the hands of SK Telecom, who would knock Flash Wolves out of contention with a win. And luckily for C9, SKT came through. Just all business for flat for SKT right here, being able to just execute their 1-3-1 composition so well. And Bang having 44% percent of the team's damage i mean that is absolutely bonkers i just feel like poppy and alistar are so important at worlds with all these barons being stolen you need <laughs> as many bodyguards for around baron as you could possibly have because even there another one stolen away yeah and with all that after six games korea's sk telecom t1 and north america's cloud nine secured the top two spots knocking flash wolves and Aime out of the tournament so i mean it might have not been pretty but cloud nine did it kobe Yes, sir. They're in there. <laughs> uh, and, the, you know, they have a, a little bit of time to practice, but they've all they were all talking about how, uh, yes, we're super glad that we made it, but they're very well aware that there's a lot of stuff they're going to have to improve on. Well, of course, it's fun riding to set to quarters off the backs of SKT. What better team to do it off of? But they are facing against Samsung, which personally, I don't have a lot of hope for Cloud9, unfortunately, even though Samsung looks Honestly, for me, the strongest team here so far, oh. and that's quite scary. Well, we'll yeah, their week two performance was definitely convincing. Yeah, it was stellar. And our first quarterfinal clash comes next Thursday at 5 p.m. Central European time. Uh, no, Central time. As World 2016 takes over the historic Chicago theater, Samsung Galaxy Asset will face Cloud9 in a best of five with the winner advancing to the semifinals in New York City. So we see our matchups lining around. Let's hear your predictions. First up, Samsung Galaxy versus Cloud9. I feel Samsung. like we gave it away. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, right. Lightning, Samsung, all right. Korea, Korea, Korea. Friday's quarterfinal, SK Telecom T1 versus Royal Never Give Up. Korea, 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 Korea. Korea. all right. It's Saturday. Korea. Oh my god, the Rock Tigers versus EDG. I guess Korea. you're giving it to the Rock Tigers. And then Sunday, H2K versus Albux Nox Luna. H2K. All right, okay, that was fast. Well, we'll hear these guys out in just a second to, uh, well, say a little bit more about those predictions. But if you're watching in client, be sure to hit up youtube.com slash esports for the full-length version of Worlds Tonight. All right, uh, we can calm down and talk a bit more about all the madness that happened today. And I also want to give a shout out to our World Tonight producer, Sam. Happy birthday. Uh, SKT, Cloud9, those are the two teams that are advancing after all that, ha that happened today. And you guys said it already, SKT just looks very, very scary once again. I mean, they were able to dismantle everybody, even though they had a couple of hiccups in the way that they were closing out games. The worrying thing that makes them so strong now is that Blank actually showed up. He yeah. was crushing it. He went MVP on this game, didn't even die on Lee Sin with a, some amazing multi-people kick. Did it again in another game, and then they just put in Bangi here, have a free game, and does it again. Exactly. That's the scariest thing, right? They still have the option to swap out both junglers, and they're looking good with both. But... C9 had their most competitive, maybe, or most convincing game, even though they didn't win it, versus SKT. Can we say that? Fair enough, uh, I guess. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. All the yeah. games were struggles yeah. for yeah. them. Yeah. That, that, the yeah. reason why you're, you know, she's saying that is because a lot of the games uh, for Cloud9, the entire group stage, have been struggles. Well, we know them as a team that relies off confidence so much. And that first game, while they did pour their hearts out into that, you could see that it was the better play that we saw from them today. It just wasn't enough for their results. And that must have taken the toll on them for the remainder of the two games, which showed in how they were unable to close out against the other two opponents. Yeah, and interviewing Meteos also after that win when they still were waiting for the qualification yesterday, it was just like, I don't know what went wrong. I mean, they just looked so 
tired and done kind of already. So maybe luckily they didn't have to play another tiebreaker. I think the pressure is a lot. Yeah. Uh, to be honest, the fact that you get all the CLG fans. All right. They go to TSM <laughs> and now all of those go to TSM as well. And even if you've never even seen League, you're going to be a Cloud9 fan. Because if you're from NA, you're like, oh, put all the hopes on these guys, which is the entire weight of NA. I mean, they're chanting USA. You have the weight of the United <laughs> States on your shoulders, which is a lot. Yeah, and just quickly before we move on to that quarterfinal matchup, of course, LMS, no representatives advancing to the next round, which kind of flew under the radar because of the abundancy of upsets, but that is quite a hit for the region as well. Yeah, I mean, both of them did get pretty close. Class Wolves and AHQ were very nearly the next one, the next mm -hmm. teams in their groups to make it out. Uh, but yeah, just not not able to cut it this year. Nope, uh, not worked for them, but it is Cloud9 that advances and their gift is the quarterfinal matchup versus Samsung Galaxy. As you guys said already, you don't give Cloud9 a lot of chances to win, but you know, where are the openings and why are you so convincingly saying that Samsung is going to Well, we were talking about it on the desk and the only thing that we could see Cloud9 being able to do to win this game is off the top side, Impact versus Cuvee. He has looked shaky before, but not in this tournament in particular. He's been having a pretty decent run at it, mm. especially with the meta of the Mage's top. He's so good on the Rumble, the Cannon. He's able to actually influence team fights very well. And if you can let Impact have a run akin to the Gauntlet run, we might be able to see one or two games off the Samsung. The other thing I would mention is uh, Cloud9 have a pretty clear victor ban. So, you know, part of their pick ban phase is kind of done for them. Uh, the other thing is that Ambition uh, has a tendency, you know, no matter how many good games he has in a row, there's always that chance he goes for one of those invades like we saw in group stages. Um, so, snowballing off of, you know, I mean, relying like that. on that guy, on relying on the opponent's mistake is not the best way to for <laughs> for a team to win. But I mean, if it's your only way, then why not go all in, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you you also have to build faith, crumbs. <laughs> uh, I've turned atheist after this. <laughs> All right, uh, let's take a look at the other quarterfinal matchup, other side of the bracket. SK Telecom versus Royal Never Give Up. And, well, obviously, SK Telecom is the favorite, but Royal Never Give Up, when they show up, they do show up. It's just the same story that it's very up and down. Yeah, exactly. The biggest difference here is consistency. Yeah. SKT have been the model of a great League of Legends team here. Uh, they've shedded so many of the doubts that, you know, people had just because, oh, they lost to Longju and... Uh, you know, a little bit at the end of the season there, but the, I think the questions are pretty much gone for them, whereas RNG are still very much RNG. Yeah, and RNG just is going to have to try to achieve that peak of their play, and we were talking a lot of what is their peak. I mean, what, how, what have we seen that is really that performance that they're chasing after? And we have to guess maybe their final game against TSM or maybe their first game against... Uh, splice in which they're able to just come out with an incredible lead off the laning phase but if they can't really get a very strong macro sense of the game past that point i think skt if they return to the roots of being able to stall out games should be able to have an easy time with them and now we're moving on to the best of five right so yeah. it's a whole series that they have to keep it up for and that will be difficult versus skt hey if tsm had made it they would be versus skt so Whoa, yeah, where'd that yeah. come from? Well, huh? I'm, whoa, just whoa, saying, whoa. Yeah, just, I'm just trying to make the pain a little You're bit. just trying to remind <laughs> no, us to no, make us mind. feel worse. No, I don't. I want, no. Okay, moving on to the other quarterfinal matchup. Also in that side of the bracket, the Rocks Tigers versus Edward Gaming. Obviously, that also means that we might get a semifinal of SKT versus Rocks. And how confident are we that it's going to be Rocks? Or, well, um, I'm pretty confident just because of the top side of the map. Um, I mean, Mouse, well, to oh. me, Rocks Tigers, they, they haven't shown up expectations you know coming into this tournament but they don't have that glaring weakness like mouse is a way that you can win the game through one of the lanes versus edg and he's been exposed before by other teams already in the tournament and while we were thinking that maybe the early game would be the weakness for rocks towards the later stages they were just like nope peanut showed up and when peanut was playing on that team looked just as good as samsung just as good as skt which is a really scary thing because clear love has also not been performing to what you would expect out of a legendary jungler like him and when you meet up against a young hungry talent like peanut things aren't going to go very well. Yeah, but you say when they show up, I can I can only actually re remember two games that I was like, oh, Peanut is super like laying down the law in this game. Didn't you guys have doubts in the beginning as well? Just a little bit, but yeah. nearly as much as you had for what Clear Love was yeah. putting up. I mean, we saw him try to gank top as Lee Sin with literally a Tempest, two autos, and not even throwing out Q. What is that? That's not the kind of thing you want to see when you're saying, oh, I'm a contender for the world championship. Also, there are still those games where Clear Love does not take... Uh, many offensive actions before like eight minutes into the game, which is kind of a long time to let Pina, you know, go wherever he wants. 
Yeah, fair enough. Uh, then moving on to that other or the last quarterfinal matchup, H2K versus Alvas Knox Luna. Woo! That is a great draw for actually, I would say both of them. Yeah, definitely. Um, I, and it's it's going to be one of those exciting ones that you yeah. talked about, uh, kind of similar to the IMA games where a, a lot of different champions can be picked <laughs> and you're definitely looking forward to the, uh, you know, what's what's going to be the twist, the M. Night Shyamalan. Wild, wild <laughs> west in Europe, but uh, both, as you said, both teams are going to be happy that they've drew against each other and they probably have a bit of a feel of who can represent Europe the best. But unfortunately, I do feel like H2K is a better laner. But the other thing that I think is going to be important in this match is just tilt. I think that both these teams are very happy that they drew each other because they pretty much don't respect themselves very, don't respect each other very much. So if they start losing or doing very poorly against what they would expect to be a weaker opponent, then we might see a just landslide of a game. That being said, uh, H2K won four games in a row uh, to end out their group stage. So I feel like they are pretty confident right now. Uh, like you say, though, if they start running into some rocky games, then, you know, maybe it falls apart. We'll but I, but I they have no Korean in teams one. in their group, and now they haven't drawn a Korean team in their quarterfinals. So. I will predict that H2K will at some point play a Korean team. Right. <laughs> that makes sense. All right. Well, that's it. It's time for us to turn out the lights here in San Francisco. But we are hitting the road and we'll catch you next week in Chicago, Illinois, as the 2016 World Championship continues. Bye. It's forced to bush away, but Sneaky is ripping through people. Amazing J10 as well. Cloud9 find the advantage in the fight for once. Medios trying to go for another. There's the realm warp. Open onto Athena. That's going to fuck up. Sneaky destroys him. Casa's in. Is he going to try and steal it down? Fake is taking out Maple. Now Casa's caught out. He got it. Oh my god, he stole the Baron. MMD is going to fall down and lose his GA. But SK Telecom will secure first. Will show themselves moving into Chicago and push Cloud9 through to the quarterfinals.